Hi, I'm Allison K. Hymas, and I'm the author of The Explorer's Code, a new book about three kids who solve a mystery in a spooky old house by working together to solve codes and puzzles. Let's learn about codes and ciphers and have some fun. The year is 1553. Giovanni Battista Bellasso describes a code, a code that isn't broken until 1863, over 300 years later. This code will later become known as the Visionaire Cipher. So, first off, why isn't the code named after Belasso? In the 19th century, the code was mistakenly attributed to Blaise de Visionaire, and the name stuck. The Visionaire Cipher is, at its core, a substitution cipher that works on the same principle as the Peter Cipher. So, you have a shifted alphabet. However, this cipher uses a rotating alphabet which means that while A might equal D in one case, in the next it might equal M or Q or Z. This makes it much more secure than a basic Caesar cipher. Charles Dodson, otherwise known as Lewis Carroll and known for writing Alice in Wonderland, called the code unbreakable. On another note, did you know that Lewis Carroll was a mathematician? He would have been interested in codes and breaking codes. Uh, the Visionaire cipher was also used as a field cipher in the American Civil War. The Confederate, Confederate Army, using bronze cipher desks, used the Visionaire to encode their messages. However, the uh, Union Army regularly, regularly broke their code and decoded their messages. I think, personally, that this might be because the Confederate Army used the same key, key phrases. They were Manchester Bluff, Complete Victory, and Come Retribution. And if you know the key phrase, at, like with the cipher, you can easily solve the code. So let's see how the Visionaire code works. The first thing that you need to encode or decode a Visionaire is a square like this. All right, you got a grid of the alphabet of the Y and the X axis. It is complicated to look at, but it is simple to use once you get started. So first off, write a message, and then choose your key phrase. Let's use Giovanni Bellasso to honor the creator of this code for ours. You will write this key phrase over and over until it's as long as your message. So we would say Giovanni Bellasso over and over and over again, one letter corresponding to each letter in our message. So this string of the key phrase again and again and again is called the key string. Then you're going to take the first letter in your plain text message, and then you're going to look for that letter on the left column of the uh, of your of this grid, this alphabet grid. To encode it, you'll follow the top row to the key stream letter. So in our case, that would be G, and see where they intersect. If the first letter of our message started with an I, this is what our grid would look like. All right. So as you can see, the column and the row intersect at O, with the, uh, with the row being our plain text letter and the column being our, our key stream, our key stream letter. That's important to keep in mind. That's our key stream letter. O becomes our ciphertext letter. So because the key stream letters are going to match up with different letters of plain text, so the next time we see an I, it may connect with a different letter in the key tree, not G. The Visionaire cipher changes, whereas the Caesar cipher doesn't. This is why it was unbreakable for 300 years. But now, we know the system, and it's yours to use too. So use this alphabet grid and your own key phrase to encode your own message, and then give the grid and your key phrase to a friend to solve. Can they break the code that took 300 years to break? Next time, we're going to talk about a different kind of cipher. This one is rather by the book, shall I say. Until then, stay tuned, or in the visionaire using our key, the, the key phrase I've given you, Y-B-O-T-T-H-O-I-O.